am currently in Philly, the city named after the great cheese steak. Now, as you can guess, Philadelphians take their cheese steaks really seriously. Now, to the outsider, it all looks the same. It looks like sandwiches, okay? But to the Philadelphian, ha huh, ha There's a lot of intricacies with the cheese steaks. Some people like them sliced. Some people like the meat chopped. Some people like cheese whiz. Some people like provolone. And they don't just feel neutral about these. This is strong differences, okay? And the two iconic cheesesteak places in the city of Philadelphia are Geno's and Pat's. Now, if you like Pat's, you definitely don't like Geno's. And if you like Geno's, you definitely don't like Pat's. Now, in the end, it doesn't really matter which cheesesteak you choose. I mean, it's all just a matter of personal preference, not a big deal. You know what, sometimes I think we treat church like that, though. We base it all on our personal preferences. You know, like, I, I, go, I go to this church because the preaching's good there. I go to this church because, like, the music's a little spicier and I like that better. But should we really be doing that? Should we really be treating church like cheesesteak, or is there a little more to it? That's what we're going to talk about today. Mm. Have you ever heard the term cradle Catholic? That refers to a Catholic who was baptized as an infant, as opposed to a Catholic who converted to the faith as an adult. I am the very first cradle Catholic in my family. My mom converted to the Catholic faith when she was about 12 years old, and she handed on the faith to me. But have you ever stopped to think about what that means? I mean, do you want to be Catholic? Do you like being Catholic? Well, before we can answer that, we should probably take a look at what it means to be Catholic. An excellent place to start is the creed that we say every Sunday. At Mass, we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Did you know that Christians have been professing this for 2,000 years? The creed is also known as the profession of faith because it lists line by line what we believe. And since today we're talking about the Catholic Church, we're going to take a look at what the church believes and how to recognize the true church. When you say, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, you are identifying and confirming that you believe in the Catholic Church. These are also known as the four marks of the church. Let's take a look at each one, starting with, well, the church as one. Is it really one? I mean, you drive down the street, and there's a church on almost every corner, each with a different name and each with a different style of worship. Is that what Christ intended? Did he really want to make it that difficult to figure out? Some people think he didn't like organized religion, or never intended to found just one church. Really? Didn't Jesus regularly worship and teach in the temple? And didn't he choose 12 apostles and set one of them apart, Peter, as their leader? It seems pretty organized to me. So what happened with the church being one? Well, about a thousand years ago, there was a split in the church between the east and the west, where the eastern part of the church no longer recognized the Pope as the successor of Peter. That continued for about another 500 years, and then other churches began to split off from the Catholic Church, each one having a different name, and each one having a slightly different, or in some cases, a very different set of beliefs. Today, can you guess how many Protestant denominations there are? Over 40,000. So how do you recognize the one true church? Jesus said, you are Peter, 
and on this rock I will build my church. Jesus established the church with a structure and organization. He appointed a leader and then gave directions. For example, at the Last Supper, Jesus said to his apostles, do this in memory of me. And after his resurrection, he told them, go and make disciples of all nations. The Catholic Church can trace its founder all the way back to Jesus himself, while our Protestant brothers and sisters can trace their traditions back to a human founder, such as Martin Luther or John Calvin. The succession of popes in the Catholic Church goes back 2,000 years, all the way back to Peter himself. St. Paul said, though we are many, we are one body in Christ. And our relationship with Christ is intricately woven into the unity, which is his body, the church. Jesus came to love, serve, and give his life for the church, for all of us. And our relationship with Christ is lived out as part of the faith community. We are not perfect, far from it, but Jesus loves us anyway and guarantees that the Holy Spirit will guard and protect the church and that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus established the church as a way of being with us always until the end of the world.